Hey guys, in this video, I want to share with you the exact recipe you can use to 4x, 400% your jazz guitar skills within the next 90 days, which is the exact approach I took for me and the exact approach I take now with students because I dig into the differentiator between a guitarist that's sort of learning jazz and playing and a serious hobbyist. And some of the differences here are, uh, yes, taking things seriously for sure, but I want to emphasize something. There's not a specific special secret chord or scale or trick or technique that makes it all come together. What comes together is the recipe that is used, right? So big point here that a, that a re recent realization for me on the channel is that there's a confusion sometimes between the ingredients and the recipe. So assume I want to bake a cake and you know, if you're watching the emails go through or my other YouTubes, you might have seen that. Uh, if I want to bake a cake, I need the ingredients. So I need the flour, I need the sugar, eggs, butter, whatever, baking soda, right? And in my mind, finally with jazz, I go, hmm, there's a lot of different ways I could put this together wrong, although I have the right ingredients. So that's uh, what I want to drive home today is give you, hand you on a silver platter on YouTube, the recipe you can use to learn the songs, and to grow your playing, to be able to comp, play chord melody, to be able to improvise over the chord progressions while maintaining your place, not getting lost, how you can jam with others, how you can create your own chord melody arrangements, how you can use a software like Band in a Box or iReal to get you an accompaniment and play solo for you uh, in the studio, in your living room, or in a coffee shop if you wanted, or to entertain guests, right? That's the exact recipe I'm about to share. And um, back to the, the baking the cake analogy, there's this tendency to assume that there's a se secret ingredient we are missing, while what we did is put the sugar in the microwave and uh, put the flour in the, the oven and the eggs and butter in the blender. And we wonder, like, I didn't put this together nicely. So what's good? I'm going to hand you the recipe and we will also talk about how to measure the outcome. So I really enjoyed that part because if what comes out at the end is not the outcome we're looking for. So here I baked something. It's not a cake that came out of the oven. Hmm, interesting. We can just say, well, I found a way to not make a cake and I'm going to do something different if I want to bake a cake. So by tracking the results and having really a, a heart to heart with yourself, meaning filming videos like this. You can just be videos on your phone, watching yourself and making a really significant, deliberate, objective observations on your playing. You can make a lot of progress really, really fast. So what I want to do now is start to present this on my screen. So we'll just switch to uh, the screen sharing on my presentation and uh, we'll see you there. All right, so let's get going. Uh, first thing I want to share with you is I encounter a lot of uh, jazz guitarists. So the typical ones will have uh, good intentions and you might see yourself in that, right? Saying, I want to learn all these songs, all these scales. I want to increase my technique. And I summarized it here in form of a formula going intentions minus plan, minus tracking, minus reporting. So I start with the best of intention, but I don't have a plan. I can't track. Uh, the time I invest, so I, I sort of almost do it. I don't track the progress that I'm making, so I don't know if my time invested in the, the instrument is valuable, and then I'm not having a report on how am I doing, and this doesn't pan out so well. So this is typically what I hear is people getting overwhelmed, uh, people going on YouTube and practicing the latest thing they found out about, or buying, buying a book, uh, or even, even worse, honestly, some of my colleagues, guitar instructors, uh, will teach people and my students would come to me and say, oh, my previous instructor, man, he gave me like 50 scales to learn and all these arpeggios and these chord inversions before I could even perform a song. So that's typically the situation. Uh, I talk to a lot of people every month on this website and this is what I see over and over again. And I pondered and I, I've been uh, seeing what works for people. So the, the serious hobbyists, the people that make the most progress have this mindset. And there's a little arrow that points. So of course, this is the kind of results that 
are expected. And I'll get back to that in a moment. So the serious hobbyist that I see that these guys are making the progress and they feel fulfilled and they feel satisfied. And they have this sense of achievement and self-expression with jazz and improvisation and the guitar. They have goals, not just intentions. They have a work plan. And I'll get back to that in a moment. Not just a plan, but a work plan. They track the time they invest to make it as efficient as possible. Not stressful, but efficient. And they track the progress that they're making. They record themselves. It's a no brainer and they report. So that's that's a serious solution to making things happen. So here's what I propose. I'm going to give you something super valuable. That's super easy. You could go off today, tonight and try this into your own playing. It's pretty simple. It's the recipe. OK, you're ready for this. Of course, there's another arrow going up and we'll talk about that in a moment. So here's a recipe. Your goal or goals should be to play tunes. That's it. That's all. As soon as I, I find myself or students, I wind up saying, oh, I got to learn this and that before I do X. That's a good sign. It's a good indicator that I should just do X. So in the case of my students, everybody I work with, without, there's not a single exception to that, have the goal of playing the tunes. In our case, it's jazz. So if your intention is to learn the chord progressions, the vocabulary, the licks and these sounds, it's a no brainer that you should be picking up these standard progressions, old tunes, new tunes, but still standards. Then having a, a, a lot of goals in mind, which is I want to play the tunes, uh, yields a certain work plan. So I, I suggest you use mine and I'll get back there in just a second. And the work plan is based around achieving the goals, of course. So it's not just a plan of uh, I'm going to do scales for 10 minutes and then hammer ons for 10 minutes. I'm going to do some reading. It's more of a plan that's aligned with the outcome. Uh, so that that's a no-brainer, but I'll get back to it. And then tracking. So after you get your goals, you know you want to play five, six, ten tunes in the next six months, and you know how to do it. And I'll share exactly the step-by-step -step approach to do that. Then you track your time. It could be a notebook, it can be a piece of paper, it can be an Excel spreadsheet. It, it, do, it does an app, it doesn't really matter so long as it's traceable that you know you're accountable to something or someone. All right. And then you can record yourself. Uh, I used to, you know, I've been teaching for a long time, about tw over 20 years now. And there it used to be a drag like I don't have a recording device, whatever. Now, guys, we don't have any excuses anymore. We have these iPhones and uh, Apple watches and iPads and whatnot. So anything will do so long as you record yourself and you're able to listen back. Uh, if you guys use a looping pedal, there's always this feature where you can step on it and you get to hear yourself back the moment you play it. That works as well, by the way. So that mini loop, that two or three chords you played will play back to you. You get to hear yourself and get this instant feedback and then report to yourself every 60 to 90 days, which is how I work. Uh, with myself and with uh, with my students, which is, hey, you know, this is what I've been doing and I've been producing this result. I've attempted to make a pizza dough, but I wound up with donuts. Hmm, something's wrong. It's not judgmental. It's not critical. It's just it's a good idea to report and see what works. So that's a recipe, guys. That's it. That's exactly how I did it for myself. That's how I've been doing it with students for the past at least three or four years. And it's it's that easy. OK, now for the work plan, I want to get back to this because there's a specific way I like to address standards and I make it very replic replicable, meaning when I encounter a song I want to play, I'm going to do X, Y and Z on it. Actually, it's seven stages. OK, and that that's a that's a biggie because it allows me and it allows my students to segment the work. Uh, often what I found is when people will grab a lead sheet, oh, this is Blue Bossa, right? So there's a melody and there's the chords and I'm going to practice the melody and the chord, then I'm done. That's not quite the actual truth. It is true somewhat. But what I like to do is to approach a song in seven distinct separate ways and to do that over all of the standards I have to learn my goal. And as I learn more tunes, it gets easier and easier. And the techniques I need to master all come from being confronted with the repertoire. So let's get into it. So jazz standard process, bird's eye view. I call it the jazz guitar accelerator standard process. It's how I, I work with my students. So we start here, okay? And here we go. 
All right, let's learn staple chords. What's, what does that mean? Well, you know when you have a, a staple in a recipe, like flour or sugar or honey, it's a staple. So what I do, I look at the chords that come up in a progression, even if I encounter a song I've never played before, I will say each chord symbol needs to have this single chord uh, performed. And I choose it, I pick it, and I, if you want, I, I lock it in, I fix it. That's it. I'm not even saying you got to play it, it's just, you just got to choose, okay? Then the second step I call the conveyor belt. What I like to see, I like to think of jazz standards as conveyor belts coming back around. If you've performed at any length on, say, a blues progression, you'll see that it's 12 bar blues, right? And it's coming back. And there's this turnaround. And then again, and then we're at the top. So what I do, I take my staple chords and I perform them over that conveyor belt of the form. And this has to be in time. And typically I will use, uh, well, you know, uh, I reel. Let me just put it up. I'll, uh, what's that song? Uh, okay, Pure Imagination. That's from Willy Wonka. Thanks, Andy, by the way, if you're watching this. Uh, so I'll put it on and I'll pl press play. And this thing's going to play. Or I use my metronome or I tap my foot. And I will typically play Charleston, Charleston's or if it's a Latin, I will play a basso rhythm. I'll just play the chords that I picked in my first stage. Voila. That's it. We're done. So already we have two things. We're picking up steam. We haven't really looked at the melody yet. Now the third stage, what I like to do is establish a chord melody. Either I will create one by myself. Uh, I have a big catalog that I use with my students of really uh, beginner approachable chord melodies. I will use a book, uh, a Barry Galbraith arrangement or a Joe Pass thing or whatever. If someone has made an arrangement, uh, Martin Taylor is a good example as well. I will get an arrangement and make sure I can play it. So with that in mind, you see how everything evolves around chords a lot. And that's a fine art of playing jazz standards. The chords are at the center and then we're starting to in in incorporate the melody. Now in the fourth stage, we sort of switch step in defining the chord changes. Some people will tell you, well, you got to play, uh, you know, uh, the scale for each chord or you got to play an arpeggio for each or we hear the sound of the chord. That's correct. I have an approach that's very much, much simpler, which I'll tell you the first step here in that fourth stage is to land on the third, target the third degree of the chord. If you've done your job well here and here, the third should already be under your fingers and on your fretboard and you're going to simply land on it from a half step above or whole step above. That's it. As soon as you're able to do this, what you're trying to do is efficiently outline the chord changes with a melody. Okay, so you're not necessarily having to play all the arpeggios and resolutions and licks. You don't need to. You just need to find the note that is the most bang for your buck in terms of resolution. Okay, and I did talk uh, about this a little bit on uh, on YouTube as well recently. So after I'm able to do the first four stages, I'm going to confront myself to jamming on that tune. Notice how this is like the fifth stage, right? So I've already done a lot of work on the song before I get there. So in the jam session, what I want to do, there's really a few components. I want to play the melody naked. So if I'm playing blue bass, I'm not playing a full chord melody. I go ba 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 da 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 that. Then I play my comping. It should be pretty similar to what I do with the conveyor belt. And then I want to do some improv, so I may use some of that stuff I worked on the step before. So it's just to convince myself that I can perform a straight ahead baseline version of the song before I start adding new techniques on top. And by the way, this works wonders. Um, even if I had the majority of my students just work on the first five stages, then they're really anchored, they're really happy with where the techniques is going. Because you know the songs, you know the chords, you know how to make the changes. What else you need, right? And then the sixth stage is a bit more elusive. It's for when you want to comp voicings that don't have a belt, uh, a belt. When I say conveyor belt, no, sorry, a v, capital V. Off we go. Doing this on the fly, guys. This is improvised, totally improvised, like jazz. So the shell voicings are removing the bass notes from the staples. So typically, the staples that will take, typically, not always, I'm able to translate them into four string voicings on the top four strings or on D, G, and B. That's it. So they're really small voicings that move around quick that don't get in the way of other instruments like the bass. That's it. 
that's the sixth stage. And then the seventh stage is to look at making up a workout that includes a lot of drills. Those are my drills. You can have more, you can have less. Those are four drill steps and then improvising, right? So you see the big picture of this is going, well, I have a tune and I can use these stages. I have seven of those. Oh yeah, of course, in the improv, well, you're building ammo. That's how I call it. It's like you, you need machine gun style, uh, eight notes. So you need to build your guy tones, your scales. You need to build all of this. Yes, you do. But it's not the whole thing. It's a part of the a wider process. And I will start to repeat this. I, I, I did this myself. This is my own approach. This is how I learned. Okay. I'll repeat this on a bunch of songs. So now I have this pool of tunes I can pick up. And oddly enough, well, not oddly, but <laughs> these tunes, these standards have a lot in common. So as soon as I've done this with five or 10 tunes, then it becomes way, way, way simpler. And I'm free to go and explore these flat nines and these George Benson licks and whatever floats your boat, right? So that recipe is the recipe I've used for myself. This recipe I've been using for my uh, private students in all forms and in several programs I ran over the year. Uh, or the years, the past few years, and now I just wanted to recap. You get it? This is exactly what you need to do. Set your goals. Ideally, your goal should be to play the tunes. Okay? Have a plan. Ideally, it's something you can replicate. I shared mine with you here. It doesn't matter if your plan is replicable and it has five stages instead of seven or eight. Or I don't, I don't mind. Just fix it and make sure you can do the same process over uh, several tunes. How the, did you watch that movie, The Founder, The Founder, The McDonald's Founder, right? So every McDonald's is ex absolutely exactly the same. This is what we're looking to do with the songs because muscle memory and hearing and technique and everything were sort of locked into place into your own playing. Then track the time you invest. And the reason I say this because, you know, people might come back to me and say, Mark, I tried your approach and I track my time and whatever. I'm like, yeah, but... <laughs> You know, if you practice 13 minutes every day after six months, what can you expect? You can expect to have made this much progress. Same as any endeavor in life, anything worthwhile, you will need to invest some time in it. So if you track your time, it keeps you honest, keeps your coach honest if you have one. And then record yourself. Ideally, what I say to students is recording snippets, 30, 45 seconds a minute, and then keeping a vault, even if you don't watch them back go back a year later and go, oh, that's how I sounded. Wow. And you can see the progress. This is like the bodybuilder uh, before and after pictures, right? And then you will report to yourself and become your own coach. Okay. If you do this, I promise if you do this well, you will watch your skills explode. Jazz is not too difficult. Uh, jazz is not another style that's completely foreign. It's a different language for sure. Uh, pretty much like if I were to start uh, learning German, I don't speak German. It is another language. It's good. There's a barrier of entry, but it's something that's totally achievable. Okay. So bird's eye view again. That's what we talked about so far. So now let me get back to uh, the program. I mentioned that I have this Jazz Guitar Accelerator program. So please make sure that you watch this video until the end, because this is the first time I go public with the program itself. I've been running it for three or four years in this format and only in the past about year and a half has the format been uh, more locked in and I've been seeing really impressive results with students. And there's a definite um, <clears throat> way to work together that is conducive to results. People are happy, I'm happy, and we have a lot of fun and we, we produce excellent, excellent progress on the guitar. Uh, namely, my guys have these kinds of results. Uh, this is a snapshot from the page the reviews page. So if you want to take a moment, you can go in your browser. After you watch this, of course, it's jazzguitarlessons.net slash reviews. And um, <clears throat> this is real life people that are either alumni or still working with me. And there's a ton of them. There's way, way more that took the program, of course, than I have videos for. Uh, feel free to watch this. This is where also I talked about the 400% progress. I'll get back to that in a moment. And uh, I'll just call, call some of them. Uh, at random, some of my favorite ones. Uh, I have Steven here, who said uh, this program. This program taught me how to practice and to appreciate what it means to study jazz, and it's absolutely attainable by anyone willing to practice. Wow. 
amazing. Uh, there's also Ralph here said, uh, Mark, you're a genius. Thank you. And your method's amazing. So that's after going through the seven stages. Uh, and there's a big reveal in the in the class. So that's really interesting. Uh, again, Mark, uh, his methods have surpassed my expectations. Uh, you're changing our lives. You know, so there's all these things that are, are said. And of course, that's just part of the program. People will share these things. I'm like, hey, can, can I can I quote you? Because this is amazing, right? And lastly, we have Fred. Uh, Mark's course is very goal-centric, very well-organized and providing a lot for all of us to dig our teeth into. Great. I'm impressed with the course and glad to be here. Awesome. So uh, this is what you can expect to happen. So this whole thing at the beginning that I shared with you, this no plan, no tracking or whatever, we just scratch that. We start and we apply this set of rules. And from the get-go, you're accountable. And that's what my students have been experimenting in the past while. So how does it work? What do you get? So the duration for the program is now one year. Uh, if we spoke in the past, and I, I do talk to a lot of guitarists all the time, I used to say, well, it's a three-month thing. It's a 12-week, 16-week. It's X month per month. Scratch that. We do it all over one year. It eases off the pressure, and you have access to all of the elements of the program for the entire year. Okay, it's like a country club, right? You pay your membership for this year, you're in, and that's it. And let's discuss some of the components of the Jazz Guitar Accelerator. So everything I talked about in my recipe for success, whoops, here we go. Okay, everything I talk about in my recipe for success is a part of the program. Of course, I found that I unlocked... Found on the web. Sorry about that. See, technology, it's all improvised. The components of the recipe are all baked into the program. So there's nothing you need to look for. There's no, no additional book or stuff you need to buy. It's all in the program. The biggest component of it is really to get unlimited video submissions and feedback to me directly. This does mean that anything that's assigned to you, as far as an assignment, a homework, has to be filmed and submitted. This is the record yourself portion. And now having the advantage of having someone, me, watch your video and give you feedback on it. The feedback is completely tailored and customized to every student because everyone's at a different place. Everyone's got different backgrounds, different technique. And this is what I like to do with students. You can expect most of the, you know, that, that progress that I showed earlier. You can expect most of your progress to come from that feedback loop. The feedback loop is very short, meaning that say we meet today or tomorrow and then you get on this call with me and you start a program, I'll assign you stuff. Within 24 or 48 hours, you can already submit your first assignments and I'll watch them and give you feedback. So right then we can uh, nip bad habits in the bud and we can find your strong points and really roll with it. That's the, that's the biggie. Uh, of course, you get one-on-ones with me. That's part of the program. I still do them to this day. And you have your accountability. So you have a daily practice log. I have a specific format. I use a Google sheet to do that. And it's shared with me. So I know if you practice your skills for 15 minutes or 25 minutes, I will know it's all shared. It's all very transparent. And uh, your practice log also includes your plan in which you can take notes, everything. I provide that uh, in the program. You have a progress tracker. So that's a biggie. And that's how people ask me, Mark, how do you know it's subjective? How do you know your students have made this much progress? Well, it's pretty simple. It is self-reported, but it's still reported. So when you get part of this program, you will see that there's a, a prompt every week to fill a certain page on the website you will go to. And then after that, you will answer questions. And let me show you uh, what kind of data I receive on my end. So this is anonymized. But here it is, that's March. This is at the time of shooting this. So I have all of these data of people answering the questions. Are you making progress? How much? How's it going, etc. And by doing that, we can get a bigger picture. Uh, and I have all this data for like the past two years, right? So by, by doing that with a progress tracker, it's easy to have a very solid, um, uh, comprehensive picture and not just a subjective, oh, today I think my skill sucks. Like, no, no, let's look at a few weeks ago. Here's how much progress you made, right? Uh, plus your video, your videos will be submitted so you can rewatch them, right? Uh, four times per year, I provide a written report as well, 
which will say, this is what's working, this is what's not working so well, here's what I recommend you do next, including all bells and whistles and stuff. That That is a biggie. Uh, let me get back to the last two at the bottom here, get this out of the way. We have two Q&A calls per week. Those are recorded, this is Eastern time, and this is me uh, leading those calls. So this is where we go and have a very specific format to answer all questions. Then we just hang out, so I call it fellowship, which is amazing. And with fellowship, we sometimes we discuss gear and our latest jam sessions, or if we have a gig coming up, or I got tickets to go see John Schofield. You know, it's, it's all, all these kind of things we do. And of course, there's two, two big ones. I will start with the course. So when you get in, I will show you a bit of a sneak peek into the course. So this is what it looks like. This is the accelerator. It is not a Facebook group. It is hosted on a different platform and I hit classroom. So in classroom, you will see you have these 12 weeks of training. I call it a boot camp because it really goes over the, the stages I described. So what we have here, let me just zoom out a little bit. What we have here, I told you there's seven stages. So my aim when you first onboard is to get you to run these seven stages on a single song. Namely, we do autumn leaves, right? right? I'm just gonna say it. We can do other songs as well, but the, the examples are given with autumn leaves and other basic progressions. So the seven weeks, quote unquote, are really those seven stages explained and demonstrated. And then in the eight week, I just uncover this and tell you, hey, you should really do this on more standards, <laughs> right? And I suggest some standards to do. And then week nine, we have uh, some theory, so harmonic analysis of chord movements. And this is another tune, uh, one more of the tune and one more of the tune with the exact same seven stages demonstrated, but that's like further example and it's getting increasing in level of difficulty. That's it. So when you come in the program, you have access to all of these videos. And of course, I'll just pick back... Uh, Let's say we have a week six. I love these shell shell voicings. So let's go. You have uh, your tuition here, the video with me, and your actions items, and then you have your downloadable PDFs with a cheat sheet with all these different shapes, of course. And then further than that, you have your practice session, which is either with me right there, and or with a sound slice link. So you have a sound slice, open it up, and you get to practice all these etudes with me. Uh, sounds like I'll just play it back a little bit right so this is fantastic because here you can also loop this you can slower lower the tempo you can show the fretboard you can zoom in you can make me a lefty if you want to make me a lefty, you can do that. You can do, there's all sorts of things you can do with Sound Slice. So everything I provide in the, oh, let me get back to the list. So the bootcamp, I call it the accelerator process. You get all of that when you come in. And this course has also additional things like jam sessions, more standards, etc. That's all part of the program as well. The meat of it is in your 12 weeks and in submitting your videos. Speaking of which, I'll show you Q&A recording. So I'll show you, we had a call yesterday and this is an ongoing class. I'll tell you about the, the schedule for the rest of 2023. Uh, so we had a group call and of course the replay is posted. So that was yesterday. And then we have the names of the people that came in and simply put, uh, we will timestamp all of the topics we talked about and you will be stamped also tagged going, hey, this is what, what we talked about here. Cool. So this is this is the platform, this is the group calls, and this is the, the course, and of course you have your community. So when you come in, you will be greeted by an amazing community of jazz guitarists that have exactly the same goal as you. Uh, this is a thing that's, uh, I would say, harder to sell because people don't believe that this really matters. When you compare this to like private lessons, the group spirit the camaraderie, we say the fellowship is really, really important as there's always people um, sharing things about some shows they saw or that that's a, a certain specific tour. Uh, people will share their videos and people will ask questions and have tips for others. It's fantastic. A uh, full uh, notification and chat function, of course. And uh, you have your community, you have your classroom, you have the calendar, which shows you when we have our, our calls or support calls. Uh, your progress report is due on Tuesdays. You have the members and the leaderboards, that's private. 
so that's that's really what's included in the program. And what you can expect is your clo closing thoughts. I started with this because to me, I, I have a passion for making sure people do the right thing, practice efficiently and actually change their playing. It's not about if you know that scale or not, how fast you play or if you know all the theory. To me, it's, hey, could we sit down and just chat for a while and have fun? Or could you have your friends come over and say, hey, Bob, Mike, uh, whoever, uh, play me a song, please. Cool, yeah, I've been you know, playing jazz for a while. Here's summertime, right? This is what matters to me. So in the past while, when I started to, to ponder uh, how I could track this, I showed you how I track it. And I was really surprised when I, I uncovered the 2022 data that I showed you here. And I put in a graph like this. I'm like, oh, wow. That's the average line. Some people do way, way better than this. And that's just for 2022, of course. Now we're past that. So within 90 days, an average student could 4x, 4x, four times their skills or more or a little less. But even then, if someone doubles their skills within 90 days, still a pretty good deal, right? So I was really impressed. I'm like, wow, OK, so there's really something here. So instead of encapsulating, encapsulating, encapsulating the program within a 12 weeks or 16 weeks or six months, I went, hey, let's do it for a year. It works. It works if you work it, right? I can't come home to you and I can't do the practice for you. I wish I could, but I can't. You get access to all of this and uh, a few closing thoughts. So my capacity for 2023 is 59 students, meaning that I'm ready to onboard as many as 59s, 59 guys It's or, or, or gals. It is the magic number. It's one of my favorite years in jazz, of course. And I'm proceeding in waves. So I will just tell you this. There's three waves of about 20 students. Right now, wave one has been complete. So wave one was the beginning of the year, I believe, January and February of 2023, where I talked to all of my past students and I was able to have, uh, I think it's 19, 20, 21 students from my alumni to come back in that version of the program, which I call the Jazz Guitar Accelerator 2.0. I will call it 3.0 very soon. So that that's the first wave. Now my second wave is starting now, which means between April and June, I expect to, to have 20 more students. So to go from 20 to, to 40 students. That second wave is almost filled as it is. And I will then stop recruitment and probably towards the end of the year for 2023. So I'm thinking August, uh, August September and October, I'll, I'll gather, have my 20 last one. So that's it. Once I reach the cap, I will make an announcement and go, hey, guys, I don't have any more space. That's a program that's filled. And I really want to make sure I proceed in waves. So what I recommend you do, if you're interested, so you want to be a part of this, please do. At least, you know, you can get started. Get a call with me. Uh, use the link below or use my calendar wh wherever it is so we can talk. Uh, I talk to a lot of people. I will invite you to, to grab this talk with me and to make sure you can probably catch the uh, at this point, the end of the second wave, uh, because it's a really worthwhile program. If you've seen yourself, you identified yourself with these struggles and you're looking for means to have accountability, to have uh, people um, uh, accompanying you through that, having feedback, knowing what to do, how to do it. And finally, uh, break this plateau and you're playing. Just get on a call with me. I talk to a lot of people. I'm pretty specific with whom I work with, meaning I will only work with the people that I know I can help for sure. And because I don't want to ruin this graph, right? I want to keep it to keep going further up. So if I can help you, I will tell you right away and I'll describe how we'll do it together and what specifically I want to do with you. And if I can't, well, I'll be super transparent. I've always been. Uh, I will provide other resources or suggestions or pointers. On that note, thanks for watching, guys. I'm Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. Please make sure that you schedule a call using the link or you get on the waiting list if the recruitment has ended. And I will see you soon on the website. Thank you. Take care.